Greetings YouTube, Sega Zombie here and welcome to another episode of the Sega Wall. Wow, the last week has flown by, been a few changes to the wall, done a few little tweaks, added a few bits, so I thought I'll do a video so we can go through that and in doing that has um, struck some nostalgic chords on a system that I want to share with you guys and we've got a few pickups so I thought I'd throw them into the mix and yeah just like the last video I don't know if you guys have seen that but go and check it out this is just going to be a laid-back retro waffle a bit of nostalgic memories in why I collect video games and again we're just going to go through a few titles in the wall and um, where do we start let's start with the pickups first like I said there's not many um, First of all, we'll begin with the update um, on the Sega Wall Dreamcast video. I've had two things turn up. Um, I'm still waiting for one other. So once that turns up, which is probably going to be after the Easter bank holiday weekend. Oh, <laughs> happy Easter, everyone. I hope you don't eat too much chocolate <laughs> or drink too much beer. But yeah, um, I think there's going to be a bit of delay in that turning up. So I'm going to put that video on hold because I just want it all to be complete and all perfect. And we're going to probably do a 2 e style video maybe. I might, I don't know, I'm in two minds. I don't know whether to just do a bit of a focus video and have a chat on some of the nostalgic games. And then I might do another video that will run alongside of that. Probably more for my benefit than yours, um, but I'm sure some of you will get something out of that. And I might actually go through and document every single um, game in the Dreamcast catalogue. I see how I go on with that. Um, like I said, I know I've, I know 2 EUK has done it in the past and I kind of like that. You know, I've sat there and watched all his videos where he goes one by one alphabetically through every game that he's got in a full set. So I'm thinking about I might do that as well. Let me know in comments down below, guys, if you think that's a good idea or not. Um, but yeah, let's go on with some pickups. Um, just a couple of games, I think I mentioned this previously when I completed the um, set, is there was a couple of games I weren't happy with. To be quite honest, some of these games I bought so long ago, and they're games that maybe I tend not to play too much or haven't played in a number of years, and going through the collection, you know, just checking cases for cracks and things like that, because I did have a few of those, unfortunately, with the house move. Um, there's, you know, I, can't, I stumbled across some games that weren't in the condition that I expect my games to be in today. And this is a funny subject actually, drifting not too far, is it shocked me actually in the last couple of years, two or three years, how my, how my perfect game should look, you know. I've always been really strong in, in, condition you know sometimes it doesn't bother me if a game's not got a manual um, as long as it's good used condition you know these games at the end of the day some of them are over 30 years old I expect a bit of general wear and tear I'm not someone that wants absolutely mint at the end of the day I play all these games so they're gonna have a bit of shelf wear they're gonna have that and I really don't mind that but I think over the last few years, how I grade a game or how I how I want a game comfortably to sit in the Sega wall, my I've gone up, I've gone up a stage, and I thought this might happen the longer I collect, but um, the Master System, for instance, um, that is another um, system that again I haven't really focused on for a few years, and it's one of the first Sega consoles I started truly collecting for and I was actually shocked in some of the condition of the games I had but honestly I really wasn't fussed back then so perhaps my perception perhaps what I'm expecting of a game it has definitely raised and that's something that really jumped out at me I was like whoa I can't believe I've got that game in this condition and does that mean I'm becoming more of a collector I still like to think I'm a gamer with a collecting passion um, but yeah, going back, I'm waffling again, I'm drifting off. Going back to the Dreamcast, here's the first couple of games. 
that I've been waiting for. First up we've got Speed Devils. Now my Speed Devils was missing this back inlay which is random and it just had the manual put in there so I got this off a guy of Galaxy Sega. he had a few games for sale and he done me a great price on these um, and it's in glorious condition so I think I can't remember what it was I think it was about 15 quid 18 posted something like that for this game Speed Devils, which actually is a great game. I used to play this game a lot, um, I, especially when it first came out. The Dreamcast, you were spoilt for choice with arcade races, as was the case with Sega. But Ubisoft, they definitely um, supported the Dreamcast well, and this was a solid game. Me and my mates actually really enjoyed this game, and it was one of the first races that I remember anyway, where the scenery and the environment had a tell in what was going to happen in the race. You know, when you get to the third lap of a race, there might be an earthquake that changes the course of the race. And I actually really, really enjoyed that. And I don't know if many racers had done it before then, but I found that a really, really niche and an original idea to the game. And obviously, as the years have gone by, we've seen them sort of things implemented more and more in games. But yeah, Speed Devils was the one of the first that I see do that, and real chuffed to get that fully complete in great condition. Next up was another game that I mentioned um, in a previous video, and that is Blue Stinger. Again, a game I can remember when the Dreamcast out came out. We were dying for a survival horror game. I can remember just wanting another like Resident Evil because of the hype of the Saturn Resident Evil and the PlayStation Resident Evil series we all wanted the next best survival horror and Blue Stinger it its pacing is out it's it's probably not aged well but this game filled that gap it really did I can remember me and my mates really got into this game and we finished it. I can remember playing this all the way through. And yeah, we really enjoyed it. It was a great little survival horror game. Um, like I said, it's probably not aged well now. And it was a stopgap game because we was all waiting for the next big survival horror, which turned out to be Resident Evil Code Veronica, which was an exclusive and a great game. It's got its haters, but I really enjoyed that game. I really liked the story behind it. And yeah, great game. So. Blue Stinger, and this one, my one, had m was missing the cover, and I damn well know at some point I had that cover, so I'm not sure guys, I'm not sure what's happened there, maybe it's fallen out in the move, I really don't know, I hunted high and low, I even searched through a box of loose manuals and um, like inlays and stuff like that, all the stuff that we've all got a box of that we keep for a rainy day just in case we need it a bit like the wires boxes <laughs> we've all got a box of wires a drawer of wires maybe more than one box of wires I've got three or four but you know I've got a little box that's got all the manuals pamphlets anything retro paperwork I just bung in there I even searched all through that and yeah there was no blue stinger so I got this off the uh, Great Galaxian as well and like I said it was about 18 quid for the two so that is, like I said, we're nearly there now with the Dreamcast. I'm just waiting on one more item, which hopefully will turn up mid next week. So that means I can get into the nitty gritty and film a really great Dreamcast video. I'm putting myself under loads of pressure for this. I want to make it the best video I've ever done, if I can, and just give the Dreamcast the, the video it deserves. It's something that ranks really, really high up in my retro passion it's it's one of the main consoles i know i focus heavy on mega drive but the dreamcast really does have a special place up here for me it, there's loads i'm going to go into guys there's so much to talk about with the dreamcast and and my involvement with it so that is a future video i don't want to keep straying because we're going to have a general waffle and keep talking but I don't want the videos to drag on too long and kill it. And I'm trying to do this unscripted. I don't do any scripting. This is straight off the cuff. I just like to talk to you guys. Look, you're here. 
in the room with me and we're just having a general chat. This is how we're gonna keep it. So sorry if I drift off a little. It's just, you know, it's all off the cuff, guys. This is how I want it. Let's keep it real. So next up after that, let's have a little sip of Coke. Oh. Oh, that's better. The cold is still lingering very slightly, but it's gone. Pretty much it's gone, which is great. But every now and again with all this talk and I get a little croaky. So excuse me for the sipping of the drink. <laughs> um, yeah, next up, we're going to show you this. Darth Vader. Now, I don't normally buy this sort of thing. Um, I used to years ago. Used to have loads of this. I've still got a few sort of like movie sort of like merchandise scattered around because I was real heavy into films, which I think in a future video I'm going to touch on that. Um, I'm going to do a video incorporating a, maybe a bit of music, movies and games because to me all three of those had a major part years ago and, and I've got fond memories of it all. So, you know, that's going to be a future video. But good old Darth Vader here. Um, I picked him up from a charity shop. I made a joke on Facebook, was chatting to the Retro Realm admin team saying, I'm going charity shop, hunting, hunting for some retro. Yeah, this is what I got. <laughs> there was no games, there was a few football titles and the like, but there was nothing, not even a PS3 game, nothing worth picking up. And I thought, I'm not going away empty handed, and I picked up Darth Vader, two pounds. I don't know if that's a bargain or not, but I was not going to let him sit there and walk out for two pounds. So the detail's pretty good. It's not too bad at all. And I'm sure he'll have a home sitting somewhere. I am your father. <laughs> and <coughs> what an awful impression that was. Sticking on the Star Wars theme, we're going to have a look at a game I've mentioned, and it's a GameCube game. Star Wars Rogue Leader 2. Now, absolutely loved this game when it came out and I picked it up on launch. It was a launch game I picked up and was blown away to be quite honest. When I set my GameCube up, this was the first game I loaded into it. And wow, wow, the memories of this game. And even today, it's still a really pretty game. It looks great and like I've said, numerous times before why don't they make games like this anymore where are these on rail spaceship shooters i love them i love these sort of games that whole arcade action feel just seems to be missing nowadays i'd love for a new game oh a star wars game would be absolutely fantastic like this whether ea would ever do a game no, i don't know i don't hold up much hopes for that but oh wouldn't it be fantastic guys the cinematics everything the whole feel of this game is spot on great game highly recommended and it costs a couple of pounds i think i paid about two pounds for this and two pounds postage so you know four pounds what a bargain it was off ebay um it's all complete it's all in there guys in lovely condition and like i said i gave this bit a blast the other night and yeah it's still a really good looking game i can't wait i'm going to play this all the way through definitely so that's another gamecube game to add to my ever-growing gamecube collection um next up what have we got we're nearly there guys with the pickups um next up we've got the asc 2 pad or the asc ii pad ft fighting type what a pad this is wow um i can remember watching retro faith's video faith she's on all of the facebook groups and she's not long started a great channel one of her first videos was focusing on these awesome fighting pads now i had heard of these pads in the past i know pete armor has uh, raves on about this pad as well because he's well into his arcade sticks and um and these style pads and it's a real great piece it's only just turned up i've done a deal with pete um coombs galaxy sega admin absolutely done me a brilliant deal on this i had a, a dupe mega drive game he needed and you know done me a swap and oh that's absolutely fantastic pete really chuffed with that 
And there we go, guys. So yeah, I really can't wait to get my teeth right into some Street Fighter. Maybe a bit of Marvel vs. Capcom and give this a right good going. It actually feels really comfortable in the hand. It's a great, great pad by the feel of it. I really can't wait to play this. Actually, after this video, it's definitely gonna be some Street Fighter action on the Dreamcast using this pad, and we're gonna put it for its paces. So yeah, it's in absolutely glorious condition, like everything I get off Pete. His stuff is always absolutely immaculate. And it's got the, the manual, Gubbins in now. So absolutely chuffed with that. Oh, really can't wait because I never knew these existed. Like I said, Pete Armour mentioned them a while ago. Whoa, that one good. Fell straight out of the bottom. <laughs> oh, great. Um, luckily, it's had a soft landing. Yeah, we'll put that down there. Yeah, like I said, um, Pete Harmer has mentioned um, these in the past. I never knew they existed. See, this is what's great, guys, is people in the community, on Facebook, on YouTube, they will always know something. They will always show you something or talk about something that you didn't know about. And I seriously, until Pete mentioned those um, pads, I wasn't sure about them. I, I didn't really know anything about them. And then, like I said, Retro Faith, she done a video focusing all on these pads. And I was just like, wow, these look awesome. I love fighting games. I need to get myself one of these pads. And that is what is so good. You know, because even though this stuff is old, it's retro, and we all, we all go after and want to capture those games that we had from back in the day and friends and family, it's great to find something new. It's great to find something that you really didn't know about. It makes it really exciting, that does. And I love that. Um, the last pickup I wanted to show you, this was a guy on Retro Realm. They were having a bit of a discussion about how to display Game Gear games, unbox Game Gear games. And as I've said to you guys, I pick up the odd few boxed, but I like, I'm, I'm not that focused on a Game Gear set at the moment. And I'm more than happy to pick up just carts only. You know, I don't tend to go for carts only on any system, but the Game Gear, I'm more than happy to do that because it's a handheld. And there was a guy on there, he, come up, he showed a, a brilliant idea. Um, it was a purchase off eBay that he got and he linked um, that seller onto the group just to say, look, this is how I display my Game Gear games. Let's see if I can do this without dropping it like I did the pad. <laughs> but as you can see, guys, it's like an acrylic stand, and I think it's actually for nail varnish or, you know, like um, makeup, that sort of thing. But look at that, it's a clear stand, and you can house your games three in a row on there. Now, I need another one because I couldn't quite get them all in, but I think that's a really nice way to display it. I can't remember the guy's name that shared this on Retro Round, but thanks, mate. That's bloody awesome. I really like that. I'm going to have that set up in a cupboard. Um, I've got like a sliding cupboard, which I've set the consoles up on. And I think I might display these on the shelf. I just need to get myself another one. I'm not sure whether I should keep them in these plastic cases or not. What do you think, guys? I don't know. I'm, I'm in two minds. Do they look better like that or would they look better out of the case? I'm not sure, but yeah, I'm really impressed with that. That was the other pickup I got. I'm gonna put that down there so I don't trip over it because I keep moving about. <laughs> That's something I do, guys. I've always done that. I'm always a mover. Whenever I'm talking, you'll notice my arms flap around and I move from side to side. It's just me, guys. It's how I am. I've always been like that. It's like I'm on speed or something. <laughs> I don't know. Um, let's have another sip of drink. Oh, that's better. Yeah, and like I said earlier, um, I've been sort of like tinkering here and there and altering things in the games room. 
I've posted pictures up on um, Instagram. Oh, yeah, I've got an Instagram. I'm getting hip, guys. I have got an Instagram account. If I can figure out how to put a link in the description, I shall. Um, and I've also got my um, Sega Zombie Facebook group. Um, I've been putting loads of pictures up there, just keeping everyone up to date with what's going on and the little tweaks I've made. And something I've done this week, or the back end of um, last weekend, is I went out and purchased um, a new shelf to put the Dreamcast in, and the old shelf which housed the Dreamcast is now housing the Master System. And in doing this, this is what sparked some of my nostalgia. I've just been going through some titles, and like I mentioned earlier, the whole thing about quality and the condition of games. Now, like I was saying, the Master System, not only was it one of the very first consoles I owned back in the day, it was also one of the very first consoles when I started seriously getting back into collecting and getting into the whole retro game vibe. This was one of the first systems I focused on. And going through some of these games, I was absolutely shocked in some of the conditions. Um, I can remember when I was really new to Facebook, and I think this happens to us all at some point. Um, it's a sad affair, but um, I can remember being wet behind the ears, being a newbie, as you would say, and joining a very early Sega group. And I can remember talking to a lad on there, and he sold me a load of, of Master System games, just as sort of like a 10 game bundle, something like that. Um, I think I paid over the odds for that. Um, but it was just the excitement and the buzz of getting into it. And the condition of the games wasn't good. I can remember some of them being extremely poor. And I actually did inbox the seller and say, look, you didn't tell me this was missing a manual. You didn't tell me that this one had water damage. And a couple of them even had fire damage. They were actually burnt on the edges. They were awful. And I'd forgotten about that until I sorted through them and I found a few of those titles. Um, I've decided that I'm moving those on and I've just been slowly listing those on Facebook as, as gamer condition, you know, people that just want the car, play the game, I'm chucking in the box and, and the inlay pretty much for nothing, I'm just charging cart prices on a lot of those. Um, so yeah, I've had a bit of a cull, I've gone through them because at the moment, with my focus solely being on the Mega Drive um, at the moment, not solely, but you know, the Mega Drive's the set that I've really got that burning desire to try and get a full set. My sort of like shine has gone off the poor old Master System. I've mentioned it in pickups videos before. It's very rare I'll pick up a game. I have refocused a little. There's a few titles that I didn't realise didn't have manuals or the condition's not great. But I am going to swap and trade and get those replaced. But there's a set, I would say 50 games maybe a few more that I really, really want in great condition. And yeah, you know, it's then when I realized, wow, I really have changed my point of view and, and my perception on what's, what I class as good condition in the thing. And I thought I'd share that with you guys. You know, let me know what you think. You know, when you first started out, were you happy just for carts or just for games with no manuals and things like that? Um, it really has changed and I really made note of that. Um, but like I said, we're gonna focus a little bit on the Master System um, because memories come flooding back and, and I wanna share this with you guys um, because there's a few games that just really, really make me feel warm, glow inside because just such fond, fond memories. And you know, it was at an age where I don't know, I must have been around about 10, 11, still really young, innocent, and had no cares in the world. I had my ZX Spectrum. I might have even had my Atari by then, I'm not sure. Um, but I can remember I worked like a trooper. I'd done two, two paper rounds, so I must have been a little bit older. I can remember doing a paper round and I was just saving my money because there was a lad on that paper round that had a master system and he wanted to sell it for whatever reason. I think he wanted to get an Atari ST or an Amiga maybe. Um, 
I think it was an ST because the Amiga come a little bit later than that. Um, and I think he really wanted one. Now, I was the opposite. I had a ZX Spectrum. My dad, oh, to, so much to my frustrations, every time he upgraded computers, it was always another Spectrum. He would just get the latest model out. And his idea was, uh, was yeah, play games, but he loved the idea that you could program, you could do basic, you could print, you know, he had the printers, he had everything, you know, it was all set up. A bit like how you had a PC set up in the 90s. That was how my dad had his Spectrum set up back in the day with them god awful like thermal roll printers and things like that, you know, and we'd be absolutely amazed <laughs> that you could type your name in and print it out. Yeah, awesome. I can remember I did enjoy loading screens. I can remember there were certain loading screens that you could um, pause it and you could you could print it out. I remember my dad going absolutely mad because I'd use up loads of paper printing off these loading screens of Commando and Robocop and the like. Um, so yeah, so look, going back to the tail, this one lad that I made really good friends with, he had a master system with a few games and I had a Spectrum. He was saving up for his Atari ST and I really wanted a console. By this time guys, I knew exactly what Sega were about and I so, so wanted. I can remember going around his for the first time, playing the Master System and him saying, yeah, I'm just not into it. I want to get into um, Atari and stuff like that. And I just remember sitting there going, wow, I want this, you know, I want to get this off you. And I did. I saved up. Um, I'm not sure if it fell around a birthday or something like that and I got some more money and I managed to save up and buy this bundle. Now, um, it was all boxed and complete and one of those games that I definitely know was in that bundle was this. And that's Vigilante. Not the best conversion on the Master System, but at the time I knew no different. I can remember playing this um, on the 8-bits and it was such a frustrating game on the 8-bit home computers but to have all them glorious sprites in loads of detail and colour what a game I was so amazed by this game and I played it for hours guys so Vigilante that was one of the first ones and like I said the memories come flooding back in that one because it was literally my first experience of the Sega Master System and then another title that was definitely in that bundle was Outrun, which, guys, you know what I feel about Outrun. I can remember thinking that conversion just couldn't be any better. Um, absolutely. You know, it had the speed, it had the frame rate, it just worked. Unfortunately, at the moment, which I'm shocked, I don't have the original Outrun released on the Master System. That will change really soon. Um, but I do have Outrun 3D. Let's let that focus. Yeah, so Outrun 3D, I have that. Um, absolutely fantastic. And yeah, the memories, guys. The memories of playing this. The music was as close as it could be, I suppose, for an 8-bit. And I just remember being absolutely mesmerized by this absolutely loved it and I played it and played it until I completed it and I had to do every path I, I just I just played that game inside and out absolutely loved it um, another game that um, I also got and I'm sure it was on release and I need to find it now guys so, Wonder Boy absolutely wow to me this game was like it was arcade perfect i couldn't remember playing this on the spectrum and i had and back then guys you had to use your imagination children had to use their imagination because you was presented with a game of really basic primary colors where sega you know was all fantastic bright vivid colours which is what we associate with arcade games and then loading that on the ZX Spectrum. I used my imagination guys 
and I made myself think that game was arcade perfect, but no way. This so, so playable on the Master System, an absolutely glorious game, and so many memories, so many memories. I can remember um, when we first got up to high school, um, it wasn't in there that long, but I can remember this being in the local chip shop. I always mention that chip shop. That was a famous chip shop back in the day because it always had one or two arcade cabs in it. I can remember me and my mates going over there and playing it. And it wasn't for long that this did have Wonder Boy in there. And wow, I was in there all the time. Always want, oh, I can remember at the weekend going to my mum and dad, can we go and get some chips? You know, because just because I wanted to go and put 10p in Wonder Boy. <laughs> So, yeah, Wonder Boy. Wow. I can remember me and my mates playing this, trying to get the high scores. Just, you know, that's sort of gone. It's missing in games today, isn't it? That competitive point scoring or seeing how who can get the furthest. Kind of miss them days, I really do. But yeah, absolutely glorious game. They were the standout games that I got in the bundle. But I just want to touch on a couple of games that I purchased and the very first console cartridge based game I purchased was from the Ipswich Software Center and I spent all my money on it and it was this. Dynamite Ducks. People are probably going, oh my God. <laughs> This game gets a lot of hate, but do you know what? I love this game. I can remember really enjoying the... See, I was influenced by the Spectrum, and this was a playable game on the Spectrum. So, you know, as soon as I saw, I was like, I've got to get a Sega game. I want to get a Sega game that I really wanted to play. And they obviously didn't have Space Harrier or anything like that in there at the time, or I couldn't afford it. That's probably what it was. If I remember rightly, you know, you had two two tier prices this game obviously didn't sell well and I could have waited a couple more weeks and maybe paid a bit more for something like Space Harrier but I didn't I went for Dynamite Ducks I can remember my mate getting this at a similar time on the Atari ST and I can remember us comparing the conversions the ST version looked good but it didn't play as well as the Master System and I can remember having one over on me mate on that one but God, we love this game. Played it all the time. Love it. I love it to this day. Just because of the nostalgia, the memories. It, they just come flooding back. I absolutely adore Dynamite Ducks. And this, thankfully, is in absolutely glorious condition. It's even got one of the original um, leaflets in it, which this in itself is just really brings the memories flooding back, this does. And there's a reason for this. I can remember I had one of these fold out leaflets, which is what you used to get back in the day. And you know, it shows all the games at the time, all the library of games that are available. And I can just remember absolutely adoring this leaflet. I took this leaflet everywhere. It was folded up and I kept it in my bag and I'd look at it at school all the time. I really remember this, it was true. And the one thing that I wanted more than anything was this. And that's the Sega glasses. I so badly wanted the Sega 3D glasses. I used to daydream about them. Dream that I would wake up and my parents had bought this game for me. And, and this one pamphlet holds so many fond, great memories. I can remember me and my mates sitting in the playground, looking at this, looking at the games, all of us saying what we thought was the best game or what the game we wanted to get next. Or you'd find out that a friend had a certain title, so you would like be hounding him to let you borrow it and you'd lend him a game. And it just all comes flooding back, guys. It really does. And when I, when I started truly getting into collecting and spending and, you know, really investing heavy into it, one of the first things I wanted to go for was the 3D glasses. And I managed to get a set and it is one of my most 
prized things in my collection. It really is. It's it's just one of those those pieces that, like I said, this was me as a ten year old, eleven year old. You know, I think I just started high school, and I can just remember daydreaming about owning a set of these. And after all these years, I think it was about five years ago, maybe a bit longer, I managed to finally get myself a set of these. And like I said, they sit proud in the Sega wall. Absolutely adore them. And this is what it's all about, guys. It's like a chain reaction. You go from thing to thing and, and something like that leaflet holds just as much nostalgia and memory to me as any 100, 200 pound video game. It's what it's all about. Let me know in comments, guys. One, let, I wanna know one of those things that sparks that whole nostalgia for you. I wanna know one item, it can be anything. A leaflet, a TV ad, a magazine, whatever it is, guys. Let me know in comments what has sparked a massive nostalgic memory burst to you because I can assure you going through these Master System games and just seeing that leaflet just brought endless amounts of my childhood childhood come flooding back guys. So we're going to leave it there because I'm talking loads and loads and loads <laughs> and like I said I want to try and keep these videos under 30 minutes if I can just so they stay paced and you know you don't we don't drift off too much um, I hope you've enjoyed this video guys until the next time I'm Sega Zombie goodbye <laughs>